Kelly, this has been a joy to put social justice together because you get to really get into people's lives. And I fell in love with this young lady. I fell in love with her story, and I know you are too. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Shorty. It began at the age of six, where I learned my gender expression. I recall having an imagination where I had an alter ego named Jasmine. She was a beautiful young lady. She did everything I couldn't do physically because I was born a boy. See, I never had the experience of once knowing what it was like to be able to be yourself. Because when you think about the finer things in life as a child, preferably seven, you never get the opportunity of people knowing who you really are. So I remember sitting on the living room floor thinking, I want to be like my mom. Not because she's my mother, but because she's a woman. Because she has hair. Because she has breasts. Because she can wear pretty dresses and high heels. And smell so sweet. But everything, as a child, was not always easy. See, being a skinny black boy in the 90s, where light skin was in, <laughs> wasn't so good. I got teased and bullied, getting asked questions like, why you walk like that? Why you talk like that? When not even having an answer to give them, but besides, it's natural. Always being aware that I was different, unaware exactly of what that meant. But in reality, I seemed to find peace in the closet. How ironic is that? There was where no one could find me in the prized possession of my mom valuable her gold satin dress. And for one moment, it had the most beautiful impact on me. And then I would wait till everybody was asleep, or at least if my mom was cooking, I would brush up against it. I would smell the perfume embedded in the fabric. And I would get the courage right then and there and snatch it down and hurry up and quickly put it on. Then my eyes caught the red pumps as I ran, slid my tiny little feet in there, and I strutted, trying to figure out how my mom made it look so easy. <laughs> Modeling the behavior of women before me, not understanding that these same shoes were somehow going to mold my own womanhood. Going, I hear something. Quickly, I kick off the heels. I throw the dress back in the closet. Why? Because boys don't wear heels. Boys don't wear dresses. i never seen that before. So as my mom come down the edge of the hallway, what are you doing? I quickly say, nothing. Just playing, rolling on the ground so I could distract her from seeing her fine garment on the floor. <laughs> she noticed. I say, she said, how the hell my dress get on the floor? Well. I hate lying to my mom, but if it stopped me from getting a whooping, I got to do what I got to do. I say, hey, mom, you know, I think I was just playing in the closet, and somehow I accidentally dropped your dress. I'm sorry. She said, it's OK, baby. As long as you be careful the next time. And she brushed it off. So I go to school, and I have all these feelings for this boy. And that was the first awakening questioning my sexuality. Years of being called gay, but having any sexual encounter. How could I answer this question? Why did people feel so entitled for an answer? And if I was to give an answer where young minds such as myself could not manage, what would it be? It would simply be, I'm a girl liking a boy, but that would be simple for a girl who's simply my age. But in my case, it was complicated. Because you was born a boy. So it was told to me that if you're a boy who like a boy, you must be gay. But I'm not a boy. I'm a girl. Why is that so hard to understand? Well, because you have all these variations of people telling you who you should be. So 
genders and social economic times telling you pink or blue? Well, I know who I am. Do you know you? So then I moved forward. And as a seven-year-old, you think, how do you have so many answers? Well, it wasn't in no book at school that I could read. I couldn't go to the hallway and say, you're gay. I couldn't point someone out like I pointed on the globe and seen Africa, where they tell me my people had originated from. My people? We share the same skin tone, but we don't share the same sexuality. Where are the people who like me, who feel different, who's oppressed, who's afraid to be their self? Where did they originate from? It was no adult that could give me that answer. But time was ticking, and I was still searching for answers. And now I'm eight, and that's the highlight of my childhood. So I had long hair that came down to my shoulders, bright, bold eyes and lashes. People used to come up to my mom all the time and say, you got a pretty little girl. She would be like, she'll utter the word, he's a boy. And the harsh reality was set in that I'm trapped in this body where I have no other option or outlet. And in that moment, it gets worse. She cuts my hair. The one feminine trait that I had to give me my glory and my beauty has never been stripped away from me with no ass, no hesitation. As I cry, I say, Ma, Please don't make me feel like all the other boys. If you just keep my hair, I'll get good grades. I'll do everything you ask. And in that instance, it was gone. Not just my hair, but my essence. Never being asked once, what did I want? Did I want to be masculine, do masculine things? Nobody ever asked me did I want to do boy things. Nobody ever asked to be a boy. But here I am. And for one minute, I think of all the moments that I was socially constructed to be this person with no way out, but a clear sense of who I was. So now you move eight years, I'm 16, and people now know me as Shorty. I go to school far away from wherever my home is. I never once want to be associated with the word gay because in my family that was not heard of. So one day I pack all my favorite things and I never come back home. And I go to my cousin's house to the one person who know I'm gay. We can have conversations, I can be my authentic self, I don't have to hide, I don't have to dress a certain type of way to please anybody because she gets me. Well, we go then. And my phone rings, and I said, Lord, if my mom called me, I shall come out to her. Lord, behold, it was my mom. I called, I said, hey, mom. She said, hey, how are you? I haven't heard from you in a while. What's going on? I said, well, I got something very important I need to tell you. She said, what is it, huh? I said, well, you know, the girl think, oh, Lord, you done got a girl pregnant. Nope, <laughs> no, ma. She said, oh, well, you must want me to meet one of your girls. Ma, not that either. If you just let me finish, I'll tell you. I said, well, ma, the whole girl thing not really working for me. She said, what? I said, the girl thing is not really working for me. She said, what that mean? I said, well, I'm gay. And she was like, oh, so you a fag? I said, no, ma, that's so offensive. You don't say that. That's like somebody calling you a bitch. And she said, Oh, well, you know, I've never known a gay person before, and that's the only thing I've known them to be called. And ignorance was bliss, and I couldn't fault her for never knowing that. So in that moment, I decided to educate myself and search for a place that, one, I could knowledge myself on who I was. And then I found the Ruth Ellis Center. That was the one place where I was greeted with smiles and bright colors and the first vision of diversity. I was able to understand my identity. And then I could go back and educate my mom and tell her, I'm not gay mom, I'm not a gay man, <laughs> I'm a trans woman. And in that moment, we were able to appreciate and move forward and grow. But the, I could tell you so many stories about myself, but the real story is every life 
that I met while at Rudellis. And it would be a crime shame if I stood before you and didn't say the name Shelly Hilliard, a 19-year-old trans woman who was found on the east side of Detroit with a torso burned. And this happened in November of 2011. And the harsh reality is, one day that might be my fate, that most people have transphobic murders for people because they're prejudiced, because they're judgmental, because they're hateful. And it's no longer right for me to stand here and allow my trans brothers and sisters to fall fate to them crying because of who we choose to be. Because there's no longer the side effect of our hormones taking our lives, but it's the shooting, the killing, the stabbing, the mutilation of our bodies that people now tend to do. So, if you didn't get anything from tonight, let me leave my legacy here tonight and say that I am Shorty, and I'm a trans woman, and I'm human too. Shorty!